Welcome back to another rig review and today we're going to take a look at Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender. This rig is going to be available on August 1st on RigStation and I will also post the link on Animation Buffet where I list all kinds of rigs and rig reviews and if you have a rig you want me to look at and review, send me an email, I will check it out. And speaking of checking out, feel free to check out my channel where I post rig reviews but also all kinds of other lectures and reviews and if that's something you would like, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button. All right, back to the rig. This is a pre-release version. Again, this is coming out August 1st. So things might change a little bit from the time I'm looking at it to when it's being released. All right, this is the rig. On the layer, you have controls for cloth. You have the mesh on off and controls on off. I added another one, which is the cloth controller. So when you take the cloth off, you're not left with these controllers. So I just added that. It would be kind of cool to have that as well. And I have my hiding it so that you can see all the controllers. You have one main controller and on this you can scale the rig which is always good and on this one you have the spine change and you have all the ikfk changes for arms and legs so be reminded that that's there so let's go down to the feet foot controller moves the foot around let's go up here and you move the foot around you can see that this time it's not moving the knee and this is why i'm doing this now if you want to do this you have pull vector so you can do that Move this around using the pull vector and you have all your follow options here for the pull vector. Going back here, you do have a twist option if you don't want the pull vector on. So let's bring this back. If you grab the leg here, you can pull and it stays put, but you have an auto stretch or you have a manual stretch as well. There is a foot control and of course there's a foot roll limit and there is a foot bank. Now there is more. Now on these controllers here, you can select the front one and you have toe like this but you can move it around however you want to and you also have this for your foot roll like this but if you go back here and turn on show pivots then you have this you can pivot off of here you can pivot off of here and you also have pivot here from the sides and pivot here from the side now what's missing here it's not really missing you have it here but I personally would love it if there is a IKFK change here and not on the main control. I don't just mainly because I'm used to it. Not that the rig breaks or anything in terms of usability, but just a reminder. So a left leg, turn this on and what happens here now, you can see it's go back. You have that for your Whoa. FK options, FK options and FK options. This being legs, of course, you got that on both sides. As you go up, you got your bend bows, but you can also scale these guys. You have the same thing for the knee, but you will see here on the knee, bam, pin control. So now you can move this and you can pin the knee. And if you've been watching those reviews, you know I'm a big fan of all those elbow and knee pins. You can go all the way up and here, it's not hidden, but very close to all the other controllers. I'll probably distance that a bit more, but here is your so it calls the shoulder for the leg. You got that here, gimbal control and rotation order as well. Going up, this is your root. Same thing here, no other extra controllers. You can move the root around. You can scale if you want just that. And of course you can rotate and translate. Going up here, that smaller one in here, that is your hip control. Dun, 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 dun. Can't scale this one. Then you have this one, which is your start of the FK control for the spine and go one up. Same thing here, one up, same thing here. And this one is your isolated chest control where you can do all kinds of things. You can also uh, scale if you want to rotate this around. Now, if you want to do something where as you move the spine around like this, you can go into the head. I'll get to that later, but you have all those extra controllers go to the chest and then here you will have the head follow there let's go back and reminder on the main controller this is where your spine controllers will change so if you do this you have this option as you can see here this option like this this option like this but then inside you got your offset controls where you can do slight tweaks you still have this one here as an isolated one so let's go back bring this back to this now as we go up shoulders you can rotate and translate. Now that being said, if you go up here and you pull, 
There is uh, no auto clavicle. You have auto stretch, you have all those other things. Then we get back to that later. But uh, there's nothing in terms of clavicle functions and no scale here, just as an FYI. You got your bembos, you got your elbow control and with a pin. So again, the pin option shows up here. Down here, another bembo. And then here you have, you can again, pull this out for auto stretch or manual stretch. Pull vector on off, if you wanna do it like this. But you also have a twist function in the channel control. Follow options, of course. And then as you get closer here, you got a main control of four. This is also visibility on off, just in case. Spreading off fingers like this. You have a relaxed pose. I don't like that when you have a very quick pose option. That's great for quick blocking. Scrunching, never seen that one before. That's cool, I like that too. There is a bend at the base, there's a curl this and you have of course separate ones and grab all of these all of that now you can also of course select these separately and do that manually no other controls on the channels and then you also have your main base carpal options here as you rotate this in same thing for the thumb you can select these separately and rotate that now let's go back down to here so you have left arm IKFK blend, you can see how the controls change. And here we are, you have this, you have rotation order or in space. If I select this, you can also scale this if you want, scale if you want, and scale if you want. And this is rotation in all areas. There's no lock on a certain channel and you still have bend bows there in case you want them. Of course, this being arms, this hits for both sides. Continuing here with the neck, as you move this around, you can see the head stays put. You wanna change this, you switch this to master. So here you will have those options. Let's go back here in the middle. You have your neck adjuster and you can see here auto SS this is auto squash and stretch. So if I move the head out like this, you can see like how it looks down. You have that. And if I would select this here, you can say, well, I don't want it to be at all or I want it to be completely squashy and stretchy, which is cool. Speaking of cool, if you go down here, you see this. And not enough rigs have that. Look at that. And oh, tension. That is great, especially for someone that will be fighting martial arts. Oh, you want tension there. That's super cool. Big fan of that. Let's go up here. This is your head control. Move this around. Ah, you have gimbal or in space rotation order. You can grab this and also scale it. I wish there would be a little control here for a squash and stretch. A lot of the rigs nowadays, they have a head squash control. If you're wondering what this is, this is not it. This is for cheeks. Very clean deformations here. This is cheeks left and right, by the way. And pucker, if you want to. Going back to head controllers, you have this one to move around. You can also scale and rotate. You have the same thing here in the middle for that to take off. You have the same thing here to do this for the lower part. Of course, you can scale all of these. And you have one below, again, scale if you want, translate, but mostly to change shapes in whatever in between you have. Then let's see here, you got your jaw ah, like that. No other controllers in the channel. And that exposes the tongue controls. Let's grab these and you can see that you can move this around. You can translate this around, all good stuff. Let's close that just a tad. You can see what else follows here. You got teeth here and you can scale if you want. This is upper and lower hamburgers almost. Then down here, you got your chin control, scalable. You have your lower lip. Of course, up here, you got your upper lip. You have the fine controls here for shapes. Here you got the big corner change. And of course you got small adjustments for that as well. In here, you have the overall mouth position and if you look at here and you rotate it follows that curvature which is also very cool here on these side controllers you have extra cheek controllers it's not just in here with the puffing then you have here overall nose control scale if you want and if you check here right on the side you have nose options here if you want to flare or move them around let's go a bit closer here control for the skin here and of course, on both sides, these are eyes and same thing for this here. Now I'm selecting this here and it's actually not selectable. Pre-release rig, a little bit of a thing to fix. Then you have this here where you change the 
lower lid. Of course, you have that up here for the whoa, upper lid as well. So you can translate down for the blinks. And do this here, which you don't have on rotation. So you translate that over for those changes here. You got a big controller to move the whole socket around. You do have tiny controllers here to adjust this and skin here. So lots of fine tuning, which is very cool. You can select this controller for iris scale and pupil scale as well. And of course, if you zoom out here, you can see eye controllers and separate controllers with eye follow. So I follow a little bit for the lids. So when you select, you have that. And when you select, you have that. But there is no quick eye blink option here. So if you select this here, there's nothing here. There's nothing here. So you're going to have to do this manually. And going up here, you have overall eyebrow control. You can see how much it deforms of the skin up there. That's cool. And extra fine tuning for the eyebrows here. Usually you only have three. This time you got actually five. This goes all the way out down to here to move things around. Obviously this is on both sides. Looking at the back, there's nothing here. This covers the rig here. But don't forget, cloth and cloth controls. So let's go back. You have those extra controllers here to move all of this around, which is very cool. And even here, you have the flap control here, right here. Cloth back here and so on. It's very cool. Lots of options there. So very easy to pose out. Lots of quick options and lots of bendy options. You can adjust all kinds of things here on the neck just for your lines. Like I said here, you got all your cloth options here as well. For some drooping. It's very cool. Quick options for fingers. Face is quickly posable. It's very cool. Big fan of that design. It's super cute too. You can even grab this here, rotate that around in terms of texture look here. It's very cool. I'm a big, big fan. And that's it for the overview of this rig. As always, if you have rigs that you want me to look at, feel free to email me. I can check them out. Post them on Animation Buffet and do a review for this channel. And make sure to check out the channel descriptions for all the credits for this rig. And that's it for me. I will see you in the next review.